falling in love is like a sense of deep vulnerability. You lose focus on yourself and the things that matter to you. Everything is just perfect. You're just smiling all the time. You get these rushes of you know, blood going through your body, these emotions, you get, you know, you breathe heavier. When you're in their presence, it's almost like they can do nothing wrong, literally. <laughs> like, doesn't even matter. Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Xander, and this is the Science of Sin for UnicornBooty.com. In our last video, we looked at how different cultures express romantic love and questioned its value. So, to help me, us, consider romantic love's worth, we're gonna examine its biological components. There's still a lot we don't understand about the human brain and emotions. But love researchers like Helen Fisher hypothesized that romantic love originates from three distinct biological phenomena. These scientists define the components of romantic love as lust, attraction, and attachment. Lust is just pure sexual desire for someone. Nope. 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 Oh, hello there, beautiful. I want to get to know you. There we go. I know that one. Attraction is simply a measure of how much you get along with or like someone. Well, we could go out. Mm, I guess. Or we could pop open a bottle of wine and Mean Girls is about to come off. Oh, yeah, thank God I knew I liked you. Okay, oh, yeah, thank God. Much better. Yeah. And attachment is a deep level of trust, commitment, and intimacy. What do you mean? ESPN or something? Nice. And if you feel all three of these things with one person, that's what some scientists call romantic love. Each component is associated with different biochemicals. Lust is driven by testosterone, estrogen, and dopamine. Intense lust for another fades after a few months. Intense attraction is managed by dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, lasting for a few years. The highs of many drugs like cocaine, meth, MDMA, appear to involve the same neurochemicals. Oh, so I could like give someone meth and they might feel like they were attracted to me. Or you could work at being a kind person who's fun to be around. Yeah, oh yeah, okay, yeah, good point. There's that too. That's yeah. That. Finally, attachment is ruled by oxytocin and vasopressin and can last a lifetime. Those are the same molecules thought to bond a baby and mother when they nurse. Hmm, so you're saying lust and attraction will fade. Yes, romantic love does seem to transition from intensely passionate to securely companion. Wait, 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 so does that mean if I'm in a monogamous relationship, I'll never feel intense passion again? Well, you'll probably still feel some lust and attraction to that person. It just won't feel as strong as it did at the beginning. But uh, that doesn't mean you won't feel intense, passionate love again. But you just said, oh, with another person. And it might not be something you can avoid. Your body and brain seem to be designed to fall in love. So when considering love, maybe think about how you value lust, attraction, and attachment. The better you understand how these biological phenomena can bring meaning to your life, the better you can ask for and construct relationships that work for you. So then can long-term relationships even last? I mean, without passionate love, uh, how can two people stay together over time? Well, subscribe to see more from Science of Sin and UnicornBooty.com and click to see our next video.